Okay guys, I've done this for my own personal purposes. Compared the Zika 7X to the Tesla Model Y, which one is better? You know what? What I've done for this video, I've compared the specs of the Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive. That's the 600 kilometer range version, the newer version that's out in China recently. I don't think you guys have that version yet in the United States, unfortunately. The reason I've compared that with the Zika 7X is because it compares very well with the 7X all-wheel drive. Both cars are all-wheel drive. The price is very similar drive away. The actual end price you pay drive away is extremely similar. They're both all-wheel drive, like I said, but there are some big differences. And in fact, there's some very big differences between the two cars. Let's have a quick look at which one is actually the better car overall for the money you pay. I'm curious to know what you guys think, because obviously I've got my own opinion here, but you know, when you've placed an order for something, you're always going to be biased. And I know that cognitive bias does exist. So please talk me out of it. If you think I've made the wrong decision, or let me know in the comment section or send me an email. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, you know how often females will tell their friends, their large friends, oh, you look beautiful, you're so gorgeous. Uh, they'll often lie to them because it's more about making your friend feel good or um, or other things could be going on there too. But anyway, I, I don't want you to do that. Please be 100% honest with me. Spec battle. Am I getting this all right? Am I looking at this from the wrong direction? Okay, let's have a look at this. The Zika 7X all-wheel drive is a very similar price to the Tesla Model Y long range all-wheel drive. Very, very similar. In fact, the 7X all-wheel drive is approximately 79,000 Australian dollars drive away. Yeah, 79,000 Australian dollars drive away after you pay del dealer delivery fees, etc. Tesla Model Y is a bit trickier because you got to pay different, well, basically, if you want a, a color that's not white, you have to pay for it. So the Tesla Model Y in white is 76,600. If you were getting in gray, it's a $1,900 option. If you want to get black or blue, it's a $1,500 option. Uh, if you want to get it in Quicksilver or red, it's a $2,500 option. So 2,500. Really what that means, I don't think many people would want the Model Y in white, but you can get it in white. If you get it in white, then it's $3,000 cheaper to buy the Model Y versus the 7X. But if you get it in, let's say average out the cost of the colors, you're gonna ultimately probably pay around $2,000 less for the Model Y, Australian dollars. So very close in price, regardless of which paint color you choose, just averaging it out. With the Zika 7X, all paint colors are standard. And I think the paint choice colors for the 7X look a little better than the Model Y colors, but I don't know, man, that's just my opinion. That's purely speculative. Anyway, purely opinionated, I should say. So the differences. Okay, first I'm gonna tell you what I think the advantages of the Zika 7X are, and there's quite a lot of them, a lot of things you don't get in the Model Y. And then I'm going to tell you the advantages of what I see in the Tesla Model Y. And there's quite a few advantages that the Tesla Model Y has. Both cars are really good, but both of them have some pros and cons, that's for sure. Okay, performance. The Model Y is a fair bit slower than the Zika 7X all-wheel drive. In fact, the 7X all-wheel drive does, does 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds. The Model Y does it in 4.8 seconds. So yeah, that's a quite a big difference in the performance world. Now, of course, a lot of people don't care about that, but anyway, charging speed. The Zika 7X gets 450 kilowatt charging much faster. Not double the speed, but you know, not that far off. And it has an 800 volt architecture. In addition, it has 22 kilowatt AC charging. So those are some pretty significant things. Of course, Tesla's supercharger network is awesome as well, but Remember, Tesla are opening them all up to non-Tesla EVs. Every single day I'm getting messages on my phone from people saying, oh, this new Tesla charger is now open. This Tesla charger is now open. You can charge your X-Ping there. You can charge your X-Ping there. So that's changing. 
Air suspension. Okay, the Zika 7X all wheel drive gets air suspension. And I think this is one key factor that people are probably not realizing. In tests that I've seen in China, I, I was invited to do this test in China. I wasn't able to attend, unfortunately. But in the test in China, people did an off-roading track and they did some proper off-roading. I mean, not just the track, they went off-roading seriously. And I'm, I'm talking a legitimate off-road course, which I don't think many electric cars would succeed in getting through. I think a lot of them just wouldn't be able to handle it. But because of the off-road, the uh, air suspension, being able to lift the car up, and I don't know, the, I don't know what Zika have done, but they've made this car legitimately good off-road. Uh, the Model Y does not have air suspension that can raise the car and give it that off-roading ability. Better brakes. The 7X comes with Akebono racing calipers, and yeah, much better four-piston brakes. 21-inch forged wheels. There's a pros and cons to this. Of course, range is going to be affected. But forged wheels are lighter than, and, and they look much nicer as well than the kind of cheap looking wheels on the Model Y. 21 inch wheels too do, do look good, but yeah, I'll mention the downsides to those in a minute. Napa leather. Okay, the entire, all the seats, everything in the Zika 7X are covered in Napa leather. Much, much nicer than the PU fake leather in, you know, most other EVs. Driver's screen, there is a, I believe a, a 10 or 11 inch driver's screen right in front of the driver, really shaped nicely into the dashboard. It's a curved screen. Of course, the Tesla Model Y doesn't have a screen in front of the driver. Now, I know a lot of people who own a Tesla Model Y don't care about that, but it's still worth mentioning, I think. Heads up display, the 7X gets a, I believe it's a 34 inch heads up display. And that, in my opinion, is a significant improvement for any car to have a heads-up display. The cars that I've driven with heads-up displays, I definitely find them easier to drive. Charging cables. The 7X, when I ordered it, it came with three charging cables. There's one that's for home use, um, which I won't actually need because I've already got a home charger. But there's also two other charging cables that it comes standard with. The Tesla doesn't. If you want to get those with your Tesla, you have to buy them when you order the car or separately. Better paint colors um, and the car looks better. So as I said before, I think the 7X paint choices are better, but that's just purely opinion. But I don't think it's really opinion to say the Zika 7X looks better. I would say nine out of 10 people would agree with that, especially with those bigger wheels as well. And the air suspension, which can lower the car, giving it a kind of aggressive type look. Massaging seats, the 7X, the front seats, have various massage functions. And because you can kind of do a, a meditation session, you can get a massage in the car while you're doing a meditation se session with the amazing sound system. That's a pretty cool feature. Electric doors. The electric doors will open and close themselves and yet they'll notice obstacles, how far they can open and close. They've got buttons, you just press it and electrically it opens. Plus they'll open all the way to 90 degrees, which is very unusual, but it means you can fit things in that you wouldn't otherwise be able to fit in. And I can tell you, I've had issues in the past, not that, you, not that you'd probably care, but I've had issues in the past where I've tried to load things into a car and because the doors wouldn't go all the way to 90 degrees, I couldn't get things in. So it's possible that's a good feature. Now, other things that I think are actually probably more significant than what I mentioned in terms of everyday usability, electric sun blinds. In the rear, for the rear two seats, you get electric sun blinds and they are actually quite good. They come up from the inside of the door cavity. And I think if you've got kids or even elderly people as well that you drive around, those um, sun blinds would be very useful. Electric glass roof cover. This is one thing that people say about EVs, the XPeng G6, the Tesla Model Y, doesn't have a glass roof cover. You've got to buy it as an option. I don't think they're actually necessary, but you know, if you think they're necessary, then the 7X gets it in all versions of the 7X. They have an electric glass roof cover. Phone charging ventilation. It's one, one slight problem with the Model Y's phone chargers, the wireless phone chargers in the front, they don't have ventilation and they need to because otherwise your phone gets too hot and it's bad for it. 70 warranty and roadside assistance. So when I bought the 7X, it came standard with a seven year unlimited kilometer warranty and seven years of roadside assistance. That compares pretty favorably with the Tesla Model Y's three-year warranty, which is, uh, to be honest, pretty bad. Tesla should change that. 
360 degree surround view camera. So 7X gets that. I don't think Tesla has that yet. 16 inch 3.9K mini LED central screen. Now the central screen in the 7X is a bit nicer, has a bit better resolution, and it's a little bit bigger than the Model Y screen. Not much bigger, not much nicer, but it is a little bit better. In addition, it also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And some people don't care about this. I personally think it's not a big deal, but some people do. And some people don't buy a Tesla for that reason. So yeah, you can sort of use some features in, in Apple CarPlay in your Tesla. You can, you can buy things and get around it so you can use it. But um, yeah, it's not standard and it's kind of a pain in the ass. The interior of the 7X is definitely nicer. It's, it's Everything's kind of soft and uh, luxurious. The 7X, particularly the all-wheel drive version, I think the interior is a step above the Model Y. It also has a leather steering wheel. So it's got a nice, I think it's got a nicer steering wheel. It has a rain sensor. And Tesla, one of the complaints about some Tesla, well, not Tesla cars in general, is sometimes the rain sensors uh, well, it doesn't have a rain sensor, so because it's using cameras, uh, it's not always accurate. And so your windscreen wipers can just start going off for no reason. That's what happens sometimes. Tesla said they fixed that recently, but um, yeah, I think it still can have issues. Steering column mounted shifter. Tesla have removed the shifter from the Model Y. It used to be on the steering column. I like that. In my Xpeng G6, I have that, and I really like that. Uh, yeah, I think adding it to the touchscreen was... Not a good idea, but anyhow. 36 magic storage capabilities. There is more little storage places in the Zika 7X than the Model Y, no doubt about that. Does it have more storage overall? No, but there's 36 storage areas and little spaces that are pretty cool, pretty genius that we have Zika have put them in the car. So the 7X is, I would say, um, well, it has more features than the Model Y. But there are some things that it's definitely missing, yeah? The Model Y has 600 kilometers of range, meaning compared to the 7X all-wheel drive, which is what we're comparing here, it has 57 kilometers more range. Now, if you'd bought the Model Y launch edition or the previous superseded version of Model Y, so it was superseded, what, a month ago, then you'd have less range. That, only, that car only had 533 or 540 kilometers of range, something like that. But the newer version is bumped up to 600. So yeah, it has 57 kilometers more range. It also gets a bigger boot. In fact, the boot is significantly bigger in the Model Y. It's also got a bigger frunk, a much bigger frunk. It's about three times the size. And it's got better software. No question, the software uh, in your Tesla is, it's the best in the industry. It's really that simple. It's also got a better autopilot. When I say autopilot, I mean, you know, um, automated cruise control, that kind of thing. It's Tesla is the best in the industry. I wouldn't believe if reviewers tell you otherwise. I think they've just got vested interest. Car companies are paying them, etc. And you can see I try to be as, as objective as possible. The truth is Tesla's autopilot is the best standard uh, autopilot type system in any car on the market. It's 400 kilos lighter, nearly just under that. But yeah, it's um, much lighter, the Model Y. So that's... Um, that's a pretty big difference. That's gonna mean you're gonna get probably a bit less tire wear for one. And because it has smaller wheels as well, uh, you're gonna get tires cheaper. Your, your tires are gonna cost a lot less, probably half the price to replace the tires on your Tesla. In addition to that, the Model Y is probably approximately 30% more efficient on the road in terms of you know, actual battery usage, about 30% more. Now for me, I use solar to charge my car. I don't really care, but if you're paying for your charging, it's one thing to consider. In the Model Y, there is also a rear media screen. Not a very big one. I don't know how useful it really is, but it's definitely there and you can use that. The rear passengers can use that. They can fiddle around with that and have fun with that. There is a better app, the Tesla app. I've, I'm currently using the Zika app for the Zika 009, which I have here in my driveway. Phenomenal car, love it. But I think Tesla's app is, well, it's the best app in the industry. Everyone pretty much agrees with that. All the reviews and everyone else says that Tesla's app is the best app. Also, there's no servicing required with your Tesla to maintain your warranty. But, I mean, your warranty is only three years, which is piss poor. 
But yeah, I mean, no servicing required means that if you don't want to service your car, you don't have to. I don't actually think you need to. I think you only need to just get your brake pads tested. I just do the things that Tesla says you need to do, which is very, very minimal. And you can do those most of those things yourself uh, and you will save some money by not having to get it serviced. Uh, there is a dash cam in the Model Y. So you've seen all those videos, uh, Tesla cam videos on YouTube where people crash into your car uh, with all these crashes, crazy crashes. And really I would say Tesla's the only brand that have cars that really do a good job of having a dash cam that records all these crashes and they can go you can go to the police and say this idiot hit me he's lying and saying i hit him here's the evidence so tesla has that inbuilt dash cam all around the car less beeps and bongs in your tesla this is one thing one this is the the most problematic issue with chinese electric cars all of them do it and i'm telling you the truth they do they beep and bong more than they should and every journalist will tell you that if they're being honest in addition to that, I'd say because of the uh, reduced weight of the Model Y, you know, that what, 800 to 900 pound weight difference, it will make a difference in handling. So the Model Y is going to have slightly better handling overall. So those are the key differences between the two. In spite of the advantages that the Model Y has, the Zika X has a lot of features that the Model Y doesn't have. And I'd say it's fair to say the Zika is more of a performance luxury car that can do a bit of off-roading as well on the side. But the Tesla is more software tech, you know, more technologically advanced when it comes to software and a couple of thousand dollars cheaper. I actually think the Zika is the better deal. I think it looks better. I think it's faster, a lot faster. And, you know, it's not a Tesla, it's a little different. In fact, I think it's definitely the better deal. But you can see here that, um, the Model Y is definitely a compelling alternative. And for anyone who's bought a Model Y recently, I can see why you have. They're very, very good cars. Remarkably good. And even though, you know, it's true that um, Tesla is well behind in things like an 800 volt architecture, they should really have that. Uh, Zika has that. And Tesla, that's probably something that they should be doing. Um, they still have some pretty advanced systems in their cars. Now, out of the two, as you can see, I've ordered the Zika X, the 7X, or the, well, I've actually ordered the long range rear wheel drive. I'm thinking about maybe changing to the all wheel drive based on doing this, looking at all these, all these numbers. It's kind of convinced me that maybe the best car on the market right now is the 7X all wheel drive, but I'm not sure. Guys, let me know what you think. I'm really intrigued. How did I go with this comparison? Is there anything I missed? If there is, let me know what it is in the comment section. Thanks for watching.